Hello and welcome everyone to Cybercast episode 77, the Transformer Video Podcast. My name is Josh, also known as G1 Hextron. I'm joined with my co-host, James, also known as Victory Saber 77. And uh, we've got quite a bit of stuff for you guys. We're going to have a new segment we're going to be doing here in the very beginning of the show where we cover a little bit of news as far as movie, video games, and Twitter stuff, and what else. Um, you know, I, I've kind of got like a list of things here. Uh, we also have some deals that we want to let you guys know about. We also have the Transformer news as far as Hasbro, Takara, Masterpiece, third-party add-ons, all that good stuff. And we also have a couple of topics that we have lined up. So it really depends on how long the first one goes, if we get into the second one. Uh, and we may do both of them or push one back to the next week. But, James, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and also let people know about the new eBay show. I'm James, Victory Saber 77 You can find me on YouTube and Twitter. And we do have a new show, the eBay show. Um, it's every other Thursday. It will be premiering this Thursday, September 25th. And it's just a show that we basically, we go on eBay and we kind of try and help educate or just try and show you some tips on how to obtain not just Transformers but collectibles. And this week we're going to stick with G1, but we're going to narrow it down to actually taking a G1 figure, Omega Supreme, and seeing how much will it cost to build it from scratch or you know just going out and just buying the Encore version. So um, stay tuned for that. It's every other Thursday at 10, PM, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time on G1 x show. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be an interesting show. And also, we're going to be looking for deals that we can find on eBay. And we'll look at, again, at some rarities, and we'll look at uh, some reissues, uh, which uh, happen to be knockoffs, but uh, and just some, some funny listings and stuff like that. But instead of actual searching for this thing, these things, uh, I'm going to already have them pulled up on my uh, watch list so that's a little bit quicker and we don't have to like randomly look for these things and it kind of cuts back on a little bit of time just because we're going to be spending a lot of it on this Omega Supreme building thing so first off with the news isn't that what news people do they get their papers ready even though they have the teleprompter in front of them um, First off, with movie stuff. So uh, this is all not going to be Transformer-based, but good nerdiness. Because uh, most of you guys, even though you're a Transformer collector, maybe you collect other things, you probably like movies, you probably like video games. So that's what we're going to kind of cover in these segments. Deadpool movie. Uh, it has got the green light. It is scheduled for February 12th, uh, 2016. Nice. I mean, we're all kind of excited about this. Um, now, we don't know if it's going to be rated R or PG-13, more than likely PG-13, PG but no confirmation on it yet. Yeah. Another thing that there's no confirmation uh, on is they want to cast Ryan Reynolds, which was the Deadpool and X-Men or X-Men Wolverine Origins or whatever. Yeah. Uh, they want to cast him, but as of right now, there's no deal in place. So that's something that they're still kind of talking about at the moment. But they do want him. Uh, I really don't – I think he's like kind of the best cast yeah, definitely. For, for that character. Uh, the other thing, yeah. because of this movie, uh, Fantastic Four, which was going to be on that date. It's actually – or not that particular date. Uh, some other rearrangements here. Fantastic Four is moving to August 7th of 2015. Uh, which is replacing the Assassin's Creed uh, movie game uh, that was it's, – it's now scheduled to be released, slotted to be announced. So no definite date on Assassin's Creed yet, but uh, looks like Fantastic Four moved up. Hmm. Last thing, Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice is rescheduled for late March uh, 2016. Uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a DC fan. I like Marvel as well, but I don't know how I'm going to feel about that movie. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I'm not. I don't know. It's it seems be. like it's just like this is our way of introducing the Justice League, which I think would be cool. So we yeah. see how Avengers did. We see how Guardians of the Galaxy did. This This seems like the... You know, obvious approach. You know, we got to get into this like big team of, you know, characters. Yeah, it just seems really slow though. It's a slow process to get into it. Where Marvel's already done several X Men, Fantastic Four, Avengers, 
Guardians of the Galaxy. It just seems DC's kind of finally getting their feet wet, it seems like. But hopefully it will lead to something greater. But. I hope so. Now, there's one notable movie that's going to be released this weekend, and or that, that's out right now, so this weekend. Uh, A Walk Among the Tombstones with uh, Liam Nelson. I'm going to go see that. I, it's probably going to be Monday whenever I go see it, or Tuesday or something like that. But it, it whenever I watched the preview, I was like, man, this looks awesome. But it's getting to that... It seems like he's doing, like, it looks like Taken Part 4 or something yeah. like that. Yep. Because uh, you have the first two Takens, then you have the the, the movie Unknown, mm-hmm. where he didn't really sure who he was, but he's just, like, some, you know, like, secret bad guy or agent or whatever, you know. And then, where he's beating up a lot of people, then you have the airplane movie. It just seems like yeah, it would be, like, just another... You know, from another branch of Taken, and then you have this one here. So, I was like, I, I like him in these type of roles. Yeah, it's good. He captures that type of character really well. So yeah, I can. I'll Mysterious, definitely go. and you probably don't want to mess with him. He looks like uh, he can murder you. So yeah. All right. As far as gaming, notable game releases for Tuesday, September twenty third. FIFA 15. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's other games coming out, but those, are, you know, that's the one that's notable. Uh, there's also a add-on pack, which is for Killer Instinct, the Combo Breaker pack. Uh, some other news: Buster Jones, uh, which voice acted G1 Blaster, uh, he passed away this week. So uh, our topic kind of goes back, you know, to that. Uh, and also another, you know, third-party release. So we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. But uh, you know, rest in peace. Twitter news: Marco uh, on Twitter says working on some Transformers animated again. So news soon. Now we we can't disclose, you know, like what exactly going on with that. So that's all we could share with you guys at this moment. But uh, I'm excited about it. You know. Yeah. Animated, you know, I, I I'm new to the animated side of things, so uh, you know, I like the toys, and uh, I'm about to jump into the cartoon as well, and you know, I'm excited. Just any animated news or G1 news, there's there's reason for me to get excited. Now, if it was Beast Wars, on the other hand, I'd be like, eh, you know, but that's that's me, you know. I know there's a uh, there's a Primal Savage out there somewhere that would be extremely excited for that. Yeah. Speaking and, of Primal Sabbath, we do have some comments really quickly if you'd like. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Dalton uh, states, cannot wait for the Deadpool movie. Needs to be rated R, though. Uh, Primal Sabbath. Dakota says, it better be rated R. He also says that Fox needs to sell off their Marvel movie rights back to Disney. And Primal Sabbath also states, Justice League will never amount to the Avengers films because they waited too long and rebooted them too much, in his opinion. Hmm. Now, can you uh, see the full screen here? It looks like Google Google changed again. There's something different this episode, different screen sharing, than there was last episode. I can see it. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see it. But as far as deals go, if you go to HasbroToyShop.com, they're doing a thing to where if you enter the coupon code or promotional code, uh, code down here, for Super 20, you can see that the total was 189.94. This is basically what I purchased. Uh, you enter Super 20. Uh, come on, a uh, little computer there. Bam. You save 20% off on your entire purchase, so we ended up saving $38 there. Also, another thing worth mentioning is if you spend over $50... Uh, pre-tax, then you also get free shipping. Uh, another thing that they did have Jetfire yesterday, it was up there as a pre-order. This morning, it went up there as it's available and in stock. Nice. So if it's hard to find a, you know, things at your local Toys R Us or Walmart, Target, wherever you like to shop for your stuff, uh, go ahead and order from them. They usually, it says they ship on one business day. I ordered some Star Wars stuff and it shipped the next day and this morning I ended up ordering some Transformer stuff. So it, it probably shouldn't take that long. Uh, 
another thing worth noting, because I, I had two different like orders, like I said. So the very first order was Star Wars stuff, and this is what I really dig, is the 6-inch Black Line series Job of the Hut and the speeder bike, those were pre-ordered. So they weren't available at the moment. But a couple of things that I wanted and that were in that purchase were the Greedo and the Princess Leia. Those were in stock, and they shipped those out. Oh, cool. And they, they didn't wait for, you know, to, you know, here's the free shipping, so we're all going to ship it at one time. So they hold on to some of the figures until the pre-order items come in, and then they ship it out. Now, they go ahead and ship out the stuff that's available, and then when those pre-order items come in, then they'll ship those out. Again, I don't have to pay for shipping a second time, so I absolutely love that. Yeah, definitely. I hate when companies say that if you're going to have a pre-order, you have to do a separate transaction and such, which is really a, really a detriment yeah, because, they because want to of shipping costs. That shipping. Yeah. So this, this, was, this was awesome. Yeah, and I saved quite a bit of money there. So you're picking up a Age of Extinction Optimus there? Well, I had to get Jetfire over 50. <laughs> so. oh, okay, I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, with the discount and everything from what I saved on Jetfire and also him and free shipping, uh, ended up only paying like $10 for this Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. So I was like, well, you know, why not? It, it was like it was going to be the purchase of these two items together. Uh, because with the with the discount and also the shipping, it was like, well, I'm going to be paying like sixty dollars, you know, if I just get Jetfire on his own. But then I added this guy, I get my twenty percent, and I don't get charged for shipping, and it was going to come out to sixty dollars. I, I I'm really basically getting him for free, so yeah, why not? Dalton states that he took advantage of the deal yesterday and today, and uh, Dakota says that Beast Wars sucks. So there you go. What? Dalton's buying stuff that's not from Dakota? <laughs> uh, here we have some um, some news about the hub. So the 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 hub is dead, or as far as you know, Hasbro <laughs> sign of it goes. Oh, they they still have a little bit of a stake in it, but it's not much. Yeah. Um, Discovery family, they're taking it over and they're going to make it, uh, it says rebranding with the channel. So, not exactly sure what they're going to be doing with it. Uh, but they said that Hasbro will retain some interest and continue to pr uh, provide programming from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. while all you guys are at work. So, yeah. Here you go. If you all don't have a TV out there. Yeah, if you don't have a DVR, then uh, it's unfortunate for you, brother. Cool. Uh, a little bit of con news. Uh, Transformers Robot in the Skies 2.0 uh, animated series panel will be at New York Comic Con 2014 on Thursday, October 9th. And uh, looks like that'll be going on from 4 p.m. to 4:45. So on October 9th, or that Cybercast that kind of follows that Thursday, uh, looks like we'll have a little bit more of this RID 2.0 information. We'll know some of the characters and uh, know a little bit more as far as the storyline and things like that. So yeah, looking forward to that. I really am interested in this whole new animated series. Really wanted to. Um... I'm hoping it's going to be really good, um, but we'll see. All right, as far as the TF4 DVD, uh, it looks like this is going to be an exclusive to Toys R Us. It's going to come with a couple of Creo figs. So you're going to get a Optimus, which looks like it's got his faceplate, so good job there, and a little Galvatron figure. Cool. Now, does this make you want to go get this one instead of just like any type of regular release? Uh, no. No. Yeah, <laughs> so just to be honest, no, it doesn't. Uh, you know, those whenever Creos first came out, they were doing the little blind bag things, and they actually put the stamp on there, so you could, you didn't have to buy thirty of them to get your, you know, ten yeah. characters or whatever. Uh, you 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 knew what they were going in, 
if you wanted to do it that way, or if you wanted to be like, I, I want to be surprised, and who cares if I have eight different of the same character, uh, you, you could do it that way. I ended up selling those and decided not to, even though I think they're cute or little things, but, I mean, it looked like a venture that I didn't want to get into anymore. It seemed like it was going to be expanding, and <laughs> I was like, yeah, let me let me quit now. But if you do collect these things, then there you go, something a little bit new. Yep. I mean, every you know retailer is going to have some type of version of Transformers. I'm sure Walmart will have some type of collector pack. Best Buy will have some type of collector pack. Target. So. Yeah, remember the first Transformer movie where it was, I think it was like Walmart or something like that, where it had like a cover you could take off and the cover like transforms into Optimus or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. There's always something strange going on with it. All right, so I'm in hand images of Generations leader class jet fire here. Uh, we've seen plenty of these. We've seen them in hand, but let's see if there's something new here that uh, we can take a look at. I'm excited to get this fig. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for the people that watch Victory Saber 77's channel. Figure. I don't I don't <laughs> want to get it. <laughs> I don't want to get ran over by that bus. Yeah, yeah, you know. I have a nice crowd over there. So do you think we're going to be able to put the little masterpiece pilots here? Probably not, no. <laughs> it would be nice. It would be a really cool treat, but I doubt it. But, man, I really want to find that figure. <clears throat> I don't know. How do, you, how do you like the chrome on the, you know, weapons and the backpack? I mean, a little too much or just, just enough? Doesn't take I away think, from the take. I think it's fine. Well, like, well, here's the thing: is I think Transformer fans and people that are fans of Masters of the Universe, GI Joe, all that, they all think the same thing. But I honestly think that Transformer fans flip out way too much and overreact to everything. They're like, like there, there's like forums started about Jetfire's Chrome. <laughs> You know, and they're like, well, you know, here's, like, little ideas on how to, like, take the chrome off and stuff like that. I'm like, by the time you finish all that, you could buy a Takara yeah. and not risk it. But I, I I think it's fine, you know, and I like the both little head pieces you get here. Yeah, I like his facial expression on his on the other one. It's pretty nice. Didn't look happy. He looked kind of, kind of a, just a smirk. It looks like he's staring down Starscream there. Yeah, like bring it. I do hope though that Repro Labels will make a um, Macross sticker set for it though. That'd be cool. <laughs> One of the the twenty that they have. So, excited about that guy. More Jetfire news. There's actually going to be a silver Jetfire. It uh, looks like he's, he's chromed silver. It's going to be a lucky draw. Nice. And three winners stand a chance to walk away with a limited edition silver Jetfire uh, with every purchase of Transformers Generation's 30th Anniversary Leader Class Jetfire. Now... <laughs> on this slip, you you entered your information, and then there's a question. So a little bit of trivia. <laughs> I don't think it's too hard, but what vehicle does Jetfire transform into? If you just look not even an inch up, there seems to be a jet, but here, here are the answers, and it's multiple choice. Uh, a, a bus. B, a yacht. Ooh. I think that that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, C, a jet. It couldn't possibly be that one. Or D, a motorcycle. Oh, I'm going with D. <laughs> so, the RC in disguise. Uh, I want to. I want to. I would like to for them to do like a poll at the end and be like, okay, well, here's what you guys guessed. <laughs> you see, like the jet right above it, and you also see these wings and. 
Oh. The I'd like to just see a poll. Do. I want to see how many people vote for a motorcycle or a bus, uh, a yacht. You know, just if you didn't know it, turned into a jet and can tell by the wings and uh, the cockpit hanging down here. Maybe you're thinking these are panels for some type of yacht. Maybe this is a deck or something, but I think that would be funny. Man, we're getting comments cr like crazy now. <laughs> people um, in the comments that are like, hey, bus. <laughs> um, Dakota says, Jetfire is so IDW, I want it so bad, although I'm on an indefinite chug diet. Um, Dalton says, cannot wait to get Jetfire in the mail. Trent says, funny, I pre-ordered this, but I'm seeing, um, or starting to see it in the States now. Uh, Dakota says, where's the Gerwalk mode? Uh, Manifator Collector says, I can't find Slog and Snarl in the USA. Um, you just got to keep looking because I know they're out there. <coughs> Dakota says, we do not overact to everything, Josh. I will, um, he'll do something to you later. I'm not going to go into detail. All right. And, um, oh, James, it looks like your spending is over yet. Um, yeah, I know. My spending is pretty much dead for the year. So, and that's about it for now. All right, so not in-hand images, but uh, clear images of Hell Warp, basically a Takara Cloud uh, repaint of the Skybite. Cool. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> this guy's getting taken back, or the Skybite figure. I like the Roadbuster. I don't like Skybite. But uh, there's a look at him. If you're familiar with car robots or RID, you you might have a different opinion about Skybite. But this being, an, I think, is like an homage to Hellscream from Beast Wars Second. Pretty cool. Not too bad. If, like if you think it's game. worth a hundred bucks, then no, not really. This is <laughs> then this is for you. So. I'd rather buy the original Hellscream if I didn't have it. All right, getting into the Transformers Club collector news. Um, you got, you got two things here. Uh, first one up is a car zap. So a little look at you know what he's going to come with and what he looks like. Looks like he's coming with a little Creo figure and a little, little something here. Not really sure what that's supposed to be, but looks like a like a gas station pump got knocked over or something like that. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, but yeah. I don't know. What do you think on this? Uh, I'm not really, I'm not really digging it too much. <laughs> uh, this is going to be another mold that I'm going to really wish that they would retire. Uh, pr pretty fast. I mean, they're yeah. they're wearing it out quickly. Yeah. Oh, it's a Creo battle station. Okay. <laughs> oh, Throw I some blocks together. Call it a battle station. Just put something at the end that looks like guns. <laughs> All right, and the next one, Serpentor. Yeah, this looks cool. Now, I, I was discussing on Facebook um, with a couple of people is you got to think how good are those leg ball joints going to be holding up? Because this is a mold that, <laughs> while I like it, it's being used quite a bit, and I think the latest version of this was the BotCon DEFCON. And if you remember, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we, we set Dakota's up in the hotel room, and it was just standing there, woke up, and it was doing the splits, uh, you know, did it again, you know, like the, the next night, just stand there. Let's see if it can hold its pose, or not even a pose, like just stand up and, and wake up the next morning, and it's on the floor with its legs split across. <laughs> what a fix with some clear nail polish. But where I always kind of come from on that is if you're going to be charging premium price, you shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, definitely. And I, I get, you know, the, the mold's been used several times, but uh, you, you need to figure something out there if you're going to be called, uh, charging premium uh, because... Who who wants to buy a new figure, especially for whatever around fifty bucks, whatever they're going to be charging for the thing, and he he can't even stand on your shelf. 
Yeah. Tell you what, if he was a G1, he'd be able to stay on your shelf. Those legs would not move. That's so. true. They wouldn't. They would not. That's that's how G1's been able to uh, survive 30 years, and just still strength. You know, stand up like little troops on your shelf. Yeah. Never doing the splits. What they should do with this mold is it has that problem, but all the gold there is actually old school gold plastic. So everything Ooh. else is just going to break on you too. So this is going to be one of those high end breakage figure type of things. So well, with that and even it being a premium <laughs> figure, um, <laughs> it's basically get this and then just keep it in its package and put in a climate control room and then maybe come out and try to sell it 20 years from now. And in small print next to this machine stamp, it says, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Not responsible what happens to it after it leaves here. But yeah, I like the idea, though. Yeah, I do. I, I like that. I, I'm hoping that they do more figures from like other... Like GI Joe or even Mask, you know, throw it in there. You know so. what a cool one would be? Uh, I don't know which you know figure they would use, but do like the Cobra Bat. Mm. You know, because it's robotic and GI Joe. I, I yeah. I don't know which one you'd use, but I think it'd be cool. Yeah. All right, getting into the masterpiece news. Uh, this guy started showing up on some of the e-tailers last week, or the end of, or not last week, but the end of this week. Looks like the rest of them are going to be getting it early, probably Monday, Tuesday of next week. So by sometime next week, you're going to be able to order this guy. If you haven't pre-ordered them, uh, you're going to be able to buy it if your local e-tailer or whoever you order from has it available. I like this pose. It's G1 style. Just yeah, <laughs> definitely G1 style. <laughs> <laughs> I always like those poses. Uh, but kind of give you, before you get it in your hands and start seeing all the reviews, uh, what it looks like. Mm. I actually like them. I mean, I know at first the whole dark, you know, windshield was kind of something, but I like, I like what it looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's gonna look good on the shelf. Yeah. And again, it's it's not a Lamborghini or a Datsun, so I'm I'm happy with that. It's some, it's it's something new. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you have like, you know, seven or eight Datsuns and Lamborghinis. Yep. It's not a Seeker. It's not a Datsun. It's not a Lambo. It's just it's finally we get something fresh and new. Last time that happened was basically Soundwave. Yeah. Which was a while ago. <laughs> All right, a little something else for Will Jack. Uh, you can take off this little mask piece, and you have this uh, little hidden face. <laughs> cool, I guess. He's got a little, little stash there. does have a hole in his head, but... You could um, connect it to the chain that came with the New Year's edition Optimus Prime for the Matrix and hang it around your neck if you like. <laughs> Have some wheeljack face bling <laughs> if you want. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, you, you, whenever you go in, uh, you know, you're if you're one of those younger collectors and you end up getting the wheeljack, uh, you go you go into your room and you're like, oh, let's check out my masterpiece, and then you notice that. Will Jack's head's missing, but then you go tell your mom, and then she's got like her little charm bracelet around her, <laughs> her wrist, and it's got Will Jack's head on there, your Matrix, every, all that good stuff. Nice. Mom, I told you to quit taking my heads. So, just a little little Easter egg there. Yeah. It's nice, but it, yeah, I could. I don't really care about it though. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it doesn't influence me either way. Yeah. All right, got quite a few Star Saber pictures here and a couple of different tabs, but something that's new is he's going to be coming with a stand, or it looks like a sh or I don't know if that's like a shield, but um, it's going to be a stand for whenever he's in his jet mode. I'm going to have to pre-order another one now. 
That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Love that. And it's colored. It looks it's not like a generic looking stand I like that. So really do dig that. You can have them in this mode and the V Star just sitting on there. Cool. That's cool too. Yeah. I mean it's it looks like it can support the weight just fine. And that's good. Um it, it just opens up the display options there. Because I know a lot of people, they, they take their, their seekers and they put them on the display stand. Uh, like, I have mine in robot form, but I know a lot of people, they put them in their jet forms like they're taken off, and they uh -huh. like to display them that way as well. So uh, it kind of opens the doors for you know the collector. Yeah, definitely. And it's just really nice that it's an, another added piece for the fan choice, you know, it just seems like this is the way Masterpiece should be going. A really, you know, this isn't that expensive. I mean, still, it's cheaper than Ultra Magnus, but we're yes. getting a lot more detail, a lot more perks with this, which is really cool. Yeah, 170 bucks. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping it, it continues. You know, every time we take a look at Star Saber, it's like we find out something new every single time. Yeah, and we we. We were already sold on it from the just the idea of it. And then we saw prototype images, and we were like, yes, definitely sold. Then we saw the fact that it was actually going to have a working brain master, and you know, we were just like, this keeps on getting better. I mean, it, here we have again with the stand, and you know, we, we, we got the price where we found out that it was – because I thought it was going to be like almost $300. Yeah. And to hear that it was 170 I was like – you know what else? Are we going a new direction with the masterpiece line? Because it seems like it's getting better and better as mm. we go. Yeah, definitely. I got a couple other Star Saber images uh, with the sword. This looks like it's silver, and not chrome. Uh, well, at least from the picture. Yeah, maybe. I hope it's chrome though, because that would that would be nice. But again, Doctor Wu can solve that. Yeah, that's something that I, I would definitely buy an add-on for. But I do like the fact you get a small one. Yeah, you have a yeah you know, a couple of different options here, which is really cool. Uh, really quick comments. Uh, let's see before they disappear here. Uh, Dakota was curious if um, exhaust will have a removable mask, um, and if you take it off, will smoke come out? Um, maybe. No confirmation yet. Yeah, no confirmation. Maybe he has the cigarette there. I don't know, but um, he wants it really bad, though. Uh, he says, oh, crap, I need to lay down a pre-order for Star Saber pretty soon. Uh, Chris is joining us, Barrett Prime Games. The face for Wheeljack was made as a nod to animated for odd reason. Dalton says, damn, Star Saber is so getting bought. And then Dakota says, Takara gives their fans a masterpiece. Hasbro tosses them a deluxe with a great story that has that was brought to life by IDW. Yeah, I'd say Takara fans are getting shafted. LOL. Just kidding. Here's a look at them fully assembled and kind of a different angle. We can kind of see the, the paint coming out. Uh, you know, from you know the shininess and you know the blue and you know the red. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Again, like we've mentioned before, if you don't have any masterpiece figures and you're not sure which figure to get you started, this would be the one. Yeah. There, you know, there's a you know Will Jack. We like it. Uh, you know, you got your Bumblebee, your Ultra Magnus. This this is going to be the one to where I think you're going to get all these bells and whistles. And it's going to be the easiest way to obtain a Star Saber. Even the G1 is going to be a lot more expensive. Now, it's probably going to drive down the price on eBay on some of the Star Sabers. You can see a lot of those going up on eBay as we get closer to March, whenever this is scheduled to be released. But a lot of people are going to start piling those things on eBay and trying to get top dollar for them if they can, but you're going to eventually see that as they get relisted and relisted, relisted, they're going to be like, all right, well, 
bring it down a little bit, and you might find some auctions and get some some lower prices. Yeah, definitely agree. It's Star Saber, if you're getting into the Masterpiece line, is one to go with. And then I would go with the MP10 reissued Asian exclusive that was released at Toys R Us. Um, that one's a good one at an affordable price also. Yeah, I believe it's here. 150 or 160 yeah. You get the trailer and everything else too, so that's a really good one. MP11, you're you're going to be able to find some some type of figure if you want, if you want a seeker really bad. <laughs> There's plenty of them out there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, now getting out of the masterpiece, and we do have one that's officially licensed, but this is from Prime One Studios. And they're coming out with their TF4 Grimlock. Now, if you remember the Prime 1 Studios, we've looked at Megatron, we looked at Starscream, Optimus Prime. This stuff is expensive. You're looking like a couple grand type expensive uh, whenever you're talking about Optimus and, you know, Meg and Starscream. It looks fantastic. But, uh, is... I'm curious... If this is a new scale Optimus, or is like this is the one that you could have bought already, or is it coming with an Optimus and a Grimlock? How much is this thing going to be? Yeah, that's going to be a huge Grimlock, though, if it's the one if that was already released. <laughs> yeah, if, if the Optimus stays in that scale, and they just make like a huge Grimlock, because that's that's a big figure. Yeah, it is. But actually, I, I, I think, think we saw it before to where it's actually it's scaled down. Because I, I, if I remember, it's been about a month. There was some con this summer that we looked and we saw the, the Grimlock and the Optimus on it. So it will be scaled down, but it's still big. Yeah. Like It took up like from head to tail, like a table on its own. I really do like them, though. I mean, if you have the money and you like really well detailed um, stuff, definitely. I mean, looks like he has the light up eyes, fire breath, looks really cool. But again, spending a lot of money, and on top of that, you have to have the room for it too. So, Yeah. Run into a, a couple of big problems there. <clears throat> All right, now getting into the third party news. From uh, Fans Toy, or fans toys. Uh, here we have Soar. A couple of different modes here. Uh, you can see with the red version, I was going to have the red eyes. Oh, we can, we can name them? Okay. Uh, the red chrome that looks up here and the red chrome here at the knees. Going with the blue version, which is more anime accurate and also to represent the Diaclone, you have the blue chest and also the blue eyes. And to... You mimic the Diaclone version. It also has the gold. Now, uh, also, you looked here. Um, you had the the clear, just like you did with the G1 toy. So this is supposed to look like the G1 toy. You have the gold here in the beak, here at the missiles, and here at the knees or the feet of his Tronodon mode. Yeah, I, I mean, so like the um, the cartoon <laughs> accurate one so much more. I yeah. I have a feeling that the toy, you know, version or look is going to go on clearance and it's going to be kind of cheap later on because I just I don't like it. it. Doesn't look that great. I think yeah, I think that you might find this one on sale. This version. Yeah. I mean, this just the color combination on this one looks better anyway. Mm hmm. You know, with the the gold and the blue, and also I like the chrome for the the beak, or the yeah. you know the beast head. Uh, it, it looks so much better in my opinion. But I mean, hey, if you if you want to go with toy accuracy, because some people you know they collect that way. I always look at uh, anime accuracy, just like Rumble is blue, Frenzy is red. I go with anime accuracy. Yeah, I do too, but also, you know, we already got a G1 in that color scheme, you know, so why do I need a, a larger version of that? Um, yeah. 
just so I can have it in a masterpiece line. I don't, you know. I'd be curious to see what Takara does if they ever get to the Dinobots in the masterpiece line to see if they go with a traditional, you know, toy accuracy or will they go with a cartoon accuracy? But well, we can touch on that on you know our topic as well, because that that kind of involves that uh, you know with these third parties and you know waiting on passing on some third parties because you kind of waiting for the masterpiece or version or you know, vice versa. A lot of Chrome here. Yeah. Uh, looks like you, you, it's just you know they, they haven't made this Chrome yet. I imagine they will. Looks like you got the little Chrome tail too. So Chrome all over this guy. You think they will, or does it it pop out and it folds in? That's why it's not chromed, or like when it's in its beast mode. Uh maybe. Because I I don't know why they you know haven't chromed that section yet. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see more. Um, most updated pictures they've released so far. I like it better than the bull's fire. Even though I, I do think the bull's fire is fine, I just uh, something about those fans' toys figures. They look great. All right, now getting into the Mikey Toys or Make Toys Quantron figs. These are going to be coming out soon. Uh, if you know some places, I know some people have them already. Uh, if you bought them at TFCon earlier, but uh, as far as mass release. They should be coming out soon. Get a little bit better look at them. So if you're on the fence on whether you want to spend uh, 300 bucks, that's what you're getting. Yeah. Not a huge fan of their individual modes, but I do like their um, combined mode. Yeah, I mean, I like them better than the Warbatron figs. Yeah. And I do think that they look good, and I also like, you know, Make Toys, uh, and I like their Green Giant. I think that they do a good job, and some of their other things that they've come out with, I think they've done a good job with. <clears throat> like, I know you have the uh, Nova Prime, yeah, you know, and you like that, and, you know, they do good quality. Uh, the joints are pretty much all tight. Oh, yeah. But as I'm kind of shying away from you know third party stuff, like I, I say that as like two master my creations things just came in this week. Um, uh, it, it's got to be like I have to absolutely have it type thing for me to buy it for third party. And I, I just don't feel like I have to have it at the moment. Yeah. And I, I see that Green Giant, like there's some places you can still buy that guy. And it's not like he's gone up in price or anything. So eventually, a year or two down the line, if I feel like I have to have this guy, more than likely he'll still be available. There's there's no rush on it right now. True. I like to see what TFC toys will do. But that, I like that mode though. I like I like the whole Computron look. Very very nice. And see them all. Attached here. Again, like I said, I, I, I do like it. It's not a have to have. It's like, do I want this or do I want the uh, Evan Go uh, the the Eva MP10 Prime? You know, with the yeah. trailer and everything, because they're about the same price. I'm like, no, want want the masterpiece. <laughs> so, with uh, unique toys, this is another cool looking little fig. I, I think I'm gonna like the individual modes better than I like the combined mode of their uh, Abominus. But this is troll, basically your blot, and uh, a couple different little things here. Uh, you can see that you have the two different arms here, so you can take this big arm section that you'll use in his alt beast mode and you can plug both of those on the back and he's going to have regular individual arms so if you, you could pose them in two different ways here that's cool that's and a it's, last touch yeah it's something that i really didn't pay that much attention to whenever we looked at this guy in previous photos but 
and you kind of see the difference. And you see how that ju it's just a little thing that snaps over his arm there. Also, another thing worth mentioning is it looks, and, and they also noted this as well, but it looks like whenever you attach this arm piece on his back, it actually kind of lifts up this section as well, or you have to lift up this arm section. You kind of notice that this is higher than this side. It's not too bad. It's kind of got the Hellboy look. <laughs> <laughs> Hell blood. <laughs> there you go. All right, some new images from Bad Cube. Here we have Brawny, which I still think is your kind of you're you're really pushing it there. I mean, you make these things that look like Hasbro Takara characters. But you, you go ahead and you're like play dumb and you name them something different. Like instead of Computron, you name it uh, Quantron. It's not you basically took the name and just added a Y at the end. So I <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I think of paper towels when I hear Brony, so I'm like okay whatever. But that's just me. <laughs> and you have Backland here. <laughs> I'd like to hear them. In a conversation with Hasbro, look, all you did is add a wire. You're gonna have to be a little bit more creative. They're like, no, it's demolitions, Brony. <laughs> <laughs> but to scale up with your masterpiece figures, and you can kind of see them here. You notice that uh, Outback does come with the gun to go on top, which is something he did in the G1. And if you haven't seen previous photos, then this little backpack section here, I'm just going to call it backpack. I, carry in thing, whatever. Uh, yeah, it turns into a gun. You're also going to have the drill here. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. It does look better than the Eye Gears version. Yeah, I think as so. As far as at least the head sculpt area. Little short, stocky guy. Look at that. That's that's, that's, that's pretty impressive. I wonder he's the second strongest G1 Autobot back in the day. Okay, I see. Come here, Optimus. I need to do some power squats. <laughs> And here you have your back lantern out back here. And they also kind of changed the, the back section here of this. If you look at that and you look at the shoulders, uh, yeah. it, it's just little little bitty differences. Even, even though it's baseball, they changed just a few little things on here to make it at least, obviously, you know, from just being head and color to be a little bit different. Uh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. I think, I think that's it. All right, yeah. I think we've looked at these. All right, we're good. All right, from is turrets and what is it? Mana, manacle or something? All right. But this is to go with your Metro plaque, so you basically see your six gun and your slammer. And it looks like these guys are final. They're getting in package. So if um, you know, you're ordering these or you pre-ordered them or were interested in getting them here really soon. Whenever we looked at these when they were just prototype stage, I thought you know, we, we all thought that they were really cool uh, to go with your generation's Metroplex. I'm sorry, but it's a, it's just a great place to stage your pictures <laughs> for your product there. <laughs> As you can see the flash in the window across. I'm oh, sure. So looking over there, it's like, is there bars across that window? <laughs> Ow. 
cool. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's just kind of odd. Like, it's like a guy taking a picture across the way there. Toys or something. I mean, go out like and yourself. take yourself to Walmart and spend 40 cents and just buy some white poster board to put behind it. Yeah. But, oh well. Uh, here we have uh, X-Transbot Ollie. Uh, we have a couple of comparisons with the old, you know, Willy survivalist. I mean, they weren't even trying to hide it back then. Uh, dude, we're just going to straight up call this dude Willy and put Autobot Minibot on there. Uh, but you can see some comparisons between these two, how they changed a little bit. I think X-Transbot did a really nice job. I thought this was good for the time that it came out. Mm-hmm. You can see that it's a bit smaller as well. Yeah, it. I mean, one thing they do is you know, just like you know Hasbro's car, you know, also their parties. They they've definitely improved in the past you know year or even six months or two years yeah. uh, from where they were. You know, when they they initially started, what was it like? Three years ago, or something like that. So, quite a big difference there. Uh, Keith, are you sticking with KFC or are you going to change this thing to ATC? I need to know. I'm going to message him and be like, so are, are we doing this to where it's KTC or KFC or you know, what, what's the deal here? Uh, but you're gonna get repaints of uh, these guys. I forget their names of uh, the originals, but you're gonna be able to combine them and more repaints. And more repaints. Well, I think we're getting the money out of this mold here. Yeah, darn right. Yep. <laughs> Aren't there already two versions already out as well? <laughs> There's like the the one that uh, Sky Dancer and uh, I forget the tank's name, whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. They're yeah. like no name cassettes anyway, but they uh, they they have the regular version where you know the blue and red, but then I think they also had like kind of like an all black one, but they did like some exclusive, but. There you go. Three new versions of these. So for you guys, are like, I gotta collect all, all the cassette. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is probably not a happy day for you. I don't need a Megatron Starscream color scheme combination thing. I mean, eh. all right. From versus Forge, new little figure we're putting together here. Um. Uh, It's very, very early. <laughs> it's like I hope here. it comes out like that. I love the little. Uh, you know that they face. actually they actually <laughs> said on Facebook that some people were like, "Will you be selling it this way, so that we can kind of create our own thing? You know, where it's just prototype kind of stage or whatever." And they said that they had quite a few comments like that, and they were like, "There's no plans for that, but you know, enough people want it, then you know they'll see what they can do." Uh, but Basically, what you're getting uh, is you know the little figure. I forget exactly who it's supposed to be, but it's, you, you get the little figure, and he's going to have armor that you can put on him. And you see that they're kind of putting on a little bit of arm armor here. I like the little smiley face they just drew on his. <laughs> yeah, I like that and the the masking tape. <laughs> um. I prefer duct tape, but you know, masking tape works too. So. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see. Let's see what happens here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. We'll let you guys know as we get more. But I, I actually wouldn't mind having that. I think that 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 is kind of <laughs> cute. Yeah, it does. It does kind of look. <laughs> Kind of cool you there. You could kind of make it the way you want. You could like, all right, thanks for giving me, you know, just this body here, and I can kind of 
you know, just take like a exacto knife or you know razor blade, whatever, and maybe make some wings for it. Make my little mini six shot or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll bring you more on that. Bold forms. They're putting out a new mock-up image. Uh, we've already seen the robot style uh, breakdown. We've also seen prototype uh, images of the Motormaster. But we haven't seen, or as far, as far as I know, I mean, we, we share a lot of stuff when we do this thing every week. So, uh, But I think this is the first time that we've seen an image of the breakdown in his car mode, which... You know, I like it. I, I, I like what Bold Forms is doing. They're not trying to be overly complicated or get too tricky with the tr- transformations or the look or design. They're just like, look, because uh, whenever I, I, I talk to these guys, they they love G1. They like comics as well, and they just like we love the G1. We just want them taller and articulated. I'm like, yes, that's that's what I want with these things. Not, nothing too crazy. Yeah, there, there he is in uh, his robot mode. James? Yeah. Oh, looks, okay. Looks good. I mean, I like the simplicity. I mean, that's probably just the G1 in me. But I don't know. What was what's with the volcano there? Oh. I do <laughs> I guess that, that was it. Let's see if there was Motormaster. All right, so Spike Art. They're going to be coming out with these little bitty things. Uh, you know, last week we looked at to where they were coming out with the. Um, they, they, they don't transform, but they were coming out with the Wheeljack little van and the little bitty Bumblebee that could roll up in there. Mm-hmm. I forget the other one, or you know, the the uh, you know the little jet here. It looks like they're coming out with you know all three of the jets. You're also gonna have a sound wave that. It's a pretty lame excuse for a, a light pole or whatever <laughs> that thing was. Um, and the other guys here. So it looks like you're getting a few more little figures, but uh. Mm. What's this guy? So this one guy says he's excited. Uh, I don't know how excited I am, but um, there you go. Bring you more as we get it. Uh, also, X2 Toys. You can see back here, it's hard to see them. You know, these blurry pictures. Uh, everybody using their, their old like cell phones from like 2002, you know, their their cameras on there, but this is going to be a Jinrai. Really? Yeah. Cool. No? Okay, it's on the uh, next thing here. I think it's the next tab. Yeah, so here we go. X2 Toys, and you see XT007. So you're, this is going to be a, a full-fledged figure. And we saw a silhouette, so now we get a little bit more detail here uh, new, in the, the new picture to where this is actually going to have, you know, all the armor pieces and stuff like that. So this is going to be their Genrai. Okay. Now, on this next picture, oh, God, no. Okay, yeah, this next picture, <laughs> uh, you can see that what we just looked at was this. Now, uh-huh. this is going to be a little bitty figure because this is only going to be six centimeters tall. Oh, so a little over two inches. Yeah, so it's it's going to be a small little fig. So it's basically, you know, what we saw back there and these, you know, little add-on pieces and stuff like that. Now, if you look over here, like I said, XT007, you look at this image that they released a while back, XT007. This is, this is a mistake on their part. They're not this thing. Uh, someone kind of... Speculated, they're like, looks like they redesigned it or something like that. No, that's that's incorrect. These are two different things. This is actually a trailer add-on to put on your Orion packs. Oh, cool. So, I, I just want to make sure that I cleared that up. You know, 
because some people it probably confused some people. At first, I was like, "What?" But it made sense mm. eventually. All right, Fans Project Core. Uh, like we mentioned last week, if you went to their website, you could put in a pre-order. You could buy a like premium membership, and you can get these little free figures. This is, you know, one of the four you'd be getting. It also says a little membership exclusive up here. So these little core figs, and it's also for you can get the you know for the trailer for Steel Core. You could also do a package to where you get the premium membership. Uh, with these free figures, you get the trailer, and you could also get Steel Core. Now, I didn't go check and see if that's still available, but you want to go to uh, fpcore.com, uh, I believe is what it is, and uh, see if you can get it. It's, it. Last I heard, there were still some available. So if you're interested in that, uh, after the show, go ahead and take a look at it. Basically what you'll be getting here. Now, also, like we mentioned last week, is this trailer, it doesn't come apart and like just add on extra armor bits to Steel Core. It actually just opens up, and you can fit all those little core figures in here. So it's just a transport? Yeah, it's just a, just a transport. Oops. They made sure they let you know, though, that it's still going to be a lot of fun uh, <laughs> whenever I read the email. And they switched out the little chest here. I mean, Steel Core still is really cool looking. Yeah. Their, their own figure, their own character. Uh, what do we have last year? A uh, little add-on from... Uh, this is actually going to be a little shape waist thing. And it looks like they're going to be carried on online retailers. Uh, and not just, you know, on the Shapeway site. It's going to be a new head for your Toy World Orion. I think there's a picture here where it shows the uh, two side by side. Where you at? There it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, the, I mean, the the original head doesn't look bad. But no. If you wanted more G one looking, or if you wanted to look like Optimus, <laughs> <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Which, if you wanted to actually look like the character, there you go. All right. Uh, oh, that's the tap. All right, so do we need to uh, get cleaned up on any comments or anything? Well, let's see what we got here. All right. No, I can see all of them here. Uh, we had some people talking about the Ollie, um, and it's pretty good. Um, Dust Mite says a few fellow collectors have him already, and they give him a thumbs up. The pros are higher than the cons, which is cool. On on uh, Ollie? Ollie, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Dakota says, "Oh, look at um, Fans Project Core uh, going the um, subscription service route." Well, it's basically a, a pre-order. Yeah, and he wants <laughs> El Maximus to be um, recolored with that mold, which I do agree with. And let's see, uh, Primal Savage says that new Orion add-on should come with a can of red spray paint to help that hue out a little bit, he states, um, and such. Other so, than that, uh, that's, that's pretty much... I'm completely uh, satisfied with uh, his Orion. I can tell you where you can get rid of it at. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into the... First topic here, uh, depends on how long we spend on it, but it's something that I want to spend quite a bit on. Do you hold off on some of these third-party figures that, you know, not like, like these mastermind creations, they're, they're not just 
just straight like looking like an articulated G1. They all kind of have like they're they're kind of edgy. They have their own little style about it. But the ones that are trying to be like your masterpiece, like this is for your masterpiece shelf. We don't even want to be considered a third party. This is for your masterpiece. Do you pass on those in hopes that uh, Hasbro Car is going to come out with their masterpiece soon? Uh, do you go ahead and dive into it, and then if it does come out, then you're like, well, you know, I'll sell mine for a little bit lower cost because now it's not going to demand that much money. Yeah. Um, you know, so how how do you kind of you know, play that? Because I've got a couple figures that they are for my masterpiece figs. You know, your your fans toys Dinobots. Fans toys, uh, you know, Shockwave, and uh, you know that's actually pretty much it for me. But I know there's a lot more out there. Uh, one that I wanted to bring up, or I, I guess before I do that, you know, what what is your kind of take on that? Uh, for me, it just depends on if it's a character that I really like and really want to have, and I can't wait for Takara to um, bring it out. And, you know, even if Takara does bring it out, I'll probably end up keeping both just for comparisons or just whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I don't really jump on the band, bandwagon as far as, like, if it's a Masterpiece figure and, you know, it's it happens to be, let's say, let's say Sunstreaker. I'm probably not going to jump on the bandwagon getting a third-party Sunstreaker okay. just because... The Omnigonics. Yeah. Um, just because I know Takara will do it and I'm willing to wait... I'm not in any hurry um, with that, but it, let's say if it's something, um, let's say Desaris, a third-party company decides to do a masterpiece Desaris that goes with the Star Saber, then I would probably think about, yeah, I, I might do that just because Takara doing a Desaris masterpiece figure is probably not in the books anytime soon, so I'll probably have that figure for a good 10 15 years before they even get to Dazar, so it, it all depends on character. So, now you kind of bringing that up. Um, always look at, let's say, you know, with the fans' toys, Dinobots. I think that they're done so well. You get the die cast, you get the multiple face plates and heads, and uh, you know, weapons, the light up features. Uh, you know, they they make fantastic quality. Um, you know, with all the chrome and stuff like that. I think that it's right on par with Takara, if not better. Oh, and yeah. I would lean more towards better because you're getting more for the money, you know, with, with, with the things that I mentioned. So even if Takara comes out with their Dinobots, I it, it's not like I have a regret purchase here. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very comfortable with mine, and you know, I'd probably still buy the Takara versions just so that I have them. But I don't, I don't see a reason that I would have to replace those. Uh, also, another thing that they came out with that's going, that's on my masterpiece shelf is the Fans Toys Quake Wave. They're Shock Wave. Mm. You know yeah. now. I don't know. It, I I believe the the situation with that is that we know that it was used uh, used to be owned by Toy Box. Came out with the original with the Galactic Man and also Astro Magnum. And those were, like, just sold at Radio Shack. Hasbro decides they want to get in it on that mold, like they did back in the, you know, the 80s, and made Shockwave. <clears throat> well, after that is all said and done, the reason why you don't get any more Hasbro to where it's like, look, we're trying to make this look like the Shockwave gun, just like the GoBots. They can use the names... They, they have the rights to the names, but they do not have the rights to the likeness. So they can't even make a Shockwave that looks like a Shockwave gun. So that was one that I know, as of right now, uh, Toy Box, you know, they, they don't own it, so someone else owns it now. But as of right now, we're not getting a Hasbro Takara Masterpiece Shockwave. So that's the only way that you could get that, so I'm perfectly fine with that purchase as well. Yeah. We, we mentioned... You know, Buster Jones passing away, voice actor for G1 Blaster. And, uh, you know, w one of the Facebook things that came up was the, was it, is it KFC, not KFC, is it Unique Toys? It's one of them. Basically, they're kind of masterpiece blaster. And he scales 
He's like the same height as your Masterpiece Soundwave or Sound Blaster, whichever one you, you uh, own there. And it has to where you can have, I believe, two or three different cassettes in it as well. And some people, you know, you could use that for your G1 or as your Masterpiece Blaster, but I got to think that there's going to be one coming out by Takara soon. And that would probably even be a release where you would get a Hasbro as well. Uh, no confirmation on that. That's you know just my opinion. But you look at Soundwave, very popular. Came with a you know a cassette. Then you had two different masterpiece releases where they came out with two packs of cassettes. So more money there. You have other characters that are cassettes just for Soundwave. That there's more money there. And then there's also repaint possibilities. You got two repaints out of the Soundwave mold. You also had a Hasbro exclusive. So I got to think that th there's money to be made here with, you know, Blaster. And then you 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 come up with, you know, the uh, you know, repaint for him and then all the cassettes and stuff like that and you come out with multiple two packs. So there's money to be made. Can you give me a reason why Hasbro Takar would not do this? Especially also you add on Buster Jones passing away. Kind of to you know, there's more reasons to do it than not do it. Yeah, I would see that they would want to jump on that that bandwagon, but it's it's up to Takara whether or not they want to do it. And um, a lot of, I mean, here here's the thing: if they did do that, would you be skeptical? Like with the whole thing that happened with Soundwave, Soundwave came out with Laserbeak, and then he became a Hasbro Toys R Us exclusive. And, you know, you could get all the other cassettes with him. Now, would you be kind of, you know, skeptical to the point that Blaster came out, you know, he came with whoever, or maybe he doesn't come with anything. And then you have the two packs with Ramhorn, you get Seal Jaw, you get Rewind, Eject, and then all of a sudden Toys R Us comes out and they have their version of Blaster. You know, would you, I mean, I wonder if there's a little bit of repercussion that they're kind of wondering, hmm, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking, throwing that out there real quick. I mean, it's a good point because I remember, you know, he he was one of the ones where Takara is charging two hundred dollars. Yeah. For, you know, the online retailers, not Takara, but um, you know, to get him two hundred bucks first run, and I was like, well, yeah, you know, two hundred bucks. That's that's cool with me. And then they were like, here's you know this two pack sixty dollars. Here's this two pack sixty dollars. Right before I was about to get that first two pack, Hasbro says, "Hey, we're going to be coming out with Soundwave and the five cassettes for like $125." I'm like, "What?" I yeah. mean, uh, if I would have went all to car route, I would have been spending $320. So $200 on top of, you know, what I could have got it for the, you know, Toys R Us uh, version. And I ended up getting that selling the Soundwave to uh, Dakota. So the, it kind of just you know evened out a little bit better for me, but that's also a hard one to find. It was it was when it came out. It it had it wasn't for me having a friend that was a manager at Toys R Us to be like, dude, this just came in. Do you want me to put it you know to the side for you? We only got two in. I was like, yep, I'm on my way. If that didn't happen for me, then I wouldn't have got one. Because they were that hard to find, so I don't know if you can really re rely on that. But second wave for the car, hundred and fifty bucks. You save fifty. Yeah. But I think this is that kind of trend that we're starting to see toward these masterpieces are kind of going down a little bit more in price. They're no longer that two hundred dollar premium. You look at Star Saber, Ultra Magnus. You know, those are getting, and they're kind of going down in price, which I do like that. Oh yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I mean, I mean, I can I see the potential because each time we think of masterpiece, we think of well, what can Takara do with the mold? You know, we we saw that with Wheeljack. I mean, they made exhaust. We saw that with the Lambors, the Dotsons, and with you know, broadcast or blaster, you could create twin cast, and you could actually do a little bit more. But you know. What other cassettes could he come with besides the four that we're all familiar with? I mean, I know there's other cassette tapes that you know you could 
do, like those nice little hard to find, very expensive dinosaur ones that combine together. Oh, yeah. Or you could do flip sides that came with the e-hobby version, twin cast. But um, yeah, I could. I really would like to see. You know, it would be nice just. You know, not with just Buster Jones dying, but um, you know, a blaster would be fun to have because he's a nemesis to Soundwave in a way. We all see that. I mean, if you're familiar with the Japanese Headmaster series, they had one hell of a battle, and it would be really cool to have Blaster, you know, on the you know masterpiece shelf. But even with a repaint for him, you could also do the Die Clone version. Yeah. As well, uh, you also have I I don't know if they do a shattered glass. You know, version of you know, like a sound wave or something like that. Uh, I, I saw that like you can get a sound blaster uh, with Ratbat for 140 bucks. So he's yeah. went down in price again. Um, you know, I, I'm actually looking at maybe going ahead and grabbing that now. What's on sale and still available, but uh, there's just so much. I mean, we'll get into halls whenever we get onto the aftercast. But golly, you you and I both. Well, you more than me, but it's been quite a bit this yeah. week. Uh, do you have anything else you want to share on that that topic? And I think I think we'll be good with just that topic, and we can save this other one uh, for like next week or something like that. No, I mean I'm. I'm good on the topic. I mean, as far like going back, do, would I pick up a third party to, you know, have on my masterpiece shelf? Like what you said, I agree with what you you pointed out. Fans Toys does a great job. The Dinobots are great. Plus, you know, I wouldn't you know sell them if I got you know official to car releases too, because I'd probably just have one in Dinobot, you know, in the dinosaur mode, and then the others in the robot mode. So it, it'll work out. I may have to strengthen my shelf just because they're going to be a little too heavy because of all that die cast. But oh yeah, um, um, yeah, I, that, yeah, I'm pretty much done on the topic, I guess. So. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and end it there. Do you have any comments in uh, as far as closing goes? Let's see here. Um. We got Fight for Your Life. Andrew says, I got Sound Blast for, for $90 sealed, which is really good. Yeah, um, it is. That's really cheap. And Dustmite says, fourth quarter is always a big money quarter um, with lots of stuff coming out and such. So, oh, yeah, it is. That's pretty much it. All right, well, uh, we'll go ahead and end it there. Uh, like Jay mentioned in the very beginning, uh, we do have a new Shopping on eBay show, so we're going to have that set up for you and ready to go live Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So we're going to be taking a look at some good deals, some rarities, um, Japanese rarities, uh, some things to look at, like people AFA grading knockoffs and just all kinds of weird stuff that happens on eBay. Uh, we're going to stick with G1. We're also going to try to piece together an Omega, a G1 Omega Supreme, and see if we can get it cheaper, and all good quality as well. We're not looking for stuff that this would be like piecing it together like if we were getting it for ourselves. We're not going to be buying stuff that's cracked or uh, bent or stress marks or anything like that. We're going to show you how to piece one together, and maybe we can get a better deal than what you could get an original, all complete, or even an encore. Uh, and then you also have the Aftercast. So, James, tell people where they can find you, and also uh, let them know about the Aftercast tonight. Uh, you can find me, Victory Saber 77 on Twitter and YouTube, and I'm the host of the Aftercast, which airs 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on my channel. So um, go check that out. We have you know, Josh here, and we'll have a whole bunch of other people just talking about what we talked about here and some other topics on Transformers and just variety of stuff in the collecting community. So... All right, and you can find me on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at G1Hextron. And also our Facebook page. Make sure you go like that, G the G1Hextron. Uh, so pretty much all the news, 90% of it, is already shared on the, the G1Hextron Facebook page. Uh, also, some of the things that I shared on there we did not bring up just because they were silhouettes. And, again, we don't show silhouettes. Uh, that's all Machine Boy's fault uh, for showing us like silhouettes for like four weeks straight. And never coming out with a product, so we were like, "Yeah, let's let's wait until something is like we have something to actually look at here." 
Uh, but I do share those on that page, so if you want to go check that out, you can like that, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoy. We'll be here again next Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Peace out. See you.